Joe, MS comes with a tremendous amount of uncertainty. I have often said that fear is the worst symptom of MS. What can we do to prepare ourselves for a lifetime of not knowing when we've just been diagnosed with MS? I think we all, whatever our situation, we hate uncertainty. And I think in the West, particularly, we delude ourselves that we have way more certainty than we have. Our natural response to uncertainty is to try and draw back that control. For me, one of the first things you can do is go, whoa, that shows I'm still really normal and I'm functioning like everybody else, because it would be abnormal to not be afraid in the face of uncertainty. What we as controlling humans naturally do is we either try and control what we can't control. So to do more and more kind of Googling or analyzing, problem solving things that actually we can't problem solve because often we don't even know what the problems are going to be. Um, and our minds fuel that. I think the other thing that some people do is to then withdraw in the face of anxiety so to give up and their mind fuels that with thoughts like you know what's the point and nothing will work it's all hopeless I'm helpless I have no control so it's almost like uncertainty produces fear and that fear either spins people into trying to do more and more and more control or they just give up and withdraw. The alternative is an easy one in many ways, um, which is very counterintuitive and none of us like, but it's to feel the fear. And that fear also shows you some really important stuff about what you care about. I love this answer because it's giving people permission to feel and maybe even lean into the fear as the normal and, and natural reaction. And I think sometimes, oftentimes, the people around us, they're not comfortable with our fear. They want us to stay yeah. positive. They want us um, to, to, to not feel those things. Joe, are mental health issues more common in people with MS than in the general population? So we're much more comfortable with physical health saying, oh, I've got a cold at the moment, or I had flu, or I'm feeling really well. So we all recognize that bodies go up and down in the normal way of things. With minds, we don't even kind of know the language very well. So when we talk about mental health, we're probably talking about mental illness. So is mental illness more prominent in people with MS? Yes, I think is the honest answer. The cause of that is more puzzling. So when you're being told you've got a diagnosis that you hadn't hoped for, and that has the potential to dramatically change your life, you know, we would be worried about the people that aren't worried, essentially. For some people, because of changes in the brain, or because of their genetic history, or maybe social isolation, they maybe will then cross over into categories that we would describe as mental illness, like clinical depression, clinical anxiety, even things like PTSD. So Joe, you've mentioned that these feelings of, of mental illness are normal with uh, an MS diagnosis, but how do we know when these feelings have gone too far and we might need professional help? I think it's to do with quantity and persistence rather than necessarily the symptoms or the type of symptoms. So when you have felt so low for every day, most of the day, for two, three weeks, then you'd want to speak to a doctor about am I clinically depressed and do I need more help? And the same with anxiety, if it's pervasive, consistent, and, and life harming. Anxiety and depression can be more prevalent in MS. If you're feeling consistently anxious or low, contact your MS team. MS can cause you to experience grief anytime MS takes something from you. When you're feeling mentally strong, build resilience with methods that work for you. Things like conscious gratitude, investing in social capital, exercise, and more. I hope you found that video useful. You can find more MS content on our channel or click the link to watch the next MS video.